Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Broadway Page. Okay, this is our third week in action. Thank you so much for continuing to watch. This is a much anticipated episode because I wanted to do an online Q&A for all of you out there who wanted to know a little bit more about my life, about Broadway, more about specific makeup things. So I sent it out on Instagram and on Twitter to see what kind of questions you might have. And you guys did a great job. You gave me so many good questions that I have already written down on my handy dandy iPad here. So I have been going through all your questions, combing through them and trying to find, um, I'm gonna answer all of them I think, but I wanna do it in a, you know, a short amount of time so it doesn't take too long, but maybe I have to split it up into two videos, but we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm gonna go through them all and I'm also gonna give you a shout out. So I'm gonna try to say your screen names. Some of them are hard, so you know be kind <laughs> i'm gonna try to do the best that i can oh by the way i'm doing uh i'm in this this fierce beat right now because i just finished the beyonce formation makeup tutorial i will put the link to the Beyonce Formation Makeup Tutorial right in the description box so you can just go there right after here. So I'm gonna get started with some of the questions that you guys have. I don't have any particular order of anything so I'm just gonna get started. Here we go. Okay, I'm gonna get started with my first questions. These are the ones that I got from Instagram. So let me see. This is Emma Reimerman. Emma Reimerman. I think that's what it is. Sounds right. <laughs> What's the most difficult part about performing on Broadway? This is her question. Um, I would say the most difficult part about performing on Broadway is the amount of time that it takes up in your life. We do eight shows a week, so there's two on Wednesday, two on Saturday, depending on the schedule. Sometimes we have two Saturday, two Sunday. That's when we have the five show weekends, and that's, whoo, that's a lot. But uh, it takes up a lot of time in your life, so you can't go to funerals and birthdays and parties all the time because you're working and it takes a lot of time out of your, your personal life. And we're usually the entertainment for the holidays so on like for Christmas we work a lot of extra shows we do a lot of extra time at work because we're the entertainment for all of you guys who are going on vacation so I think that's probably the worst part because I live in North Carolina I'm from North Carolina so it takes me a good amount of time to get to North Carolina so when I want to go visit I either have to take personal days or um, I have to go on my vacation and there's there's only a certain amount of personal days you get and there's only a certain amount of vacation you get. You get one week of vacation per six months. So um, that's probably the hardest part. Sophia Rocco, 2005, she, uh, she says, do you ever get sick of doing the same thing every day? Okay, of course, we are human. Of course you would get sick of doing the same thing every day, but we always gotta remember this is something that you asked for <laughs> this is your dream so um you know it does get a little monotonous after you've been in a show for a long time so it never gets stale or old for me because um during the periods of the show you're doing press events you're doing we did the tonys we did macy's day parade we did there was always something going on i went on for b uh there was always stuff going on but once the show gets into its run and it's running and you start to get used to your track and it's going every day, it start it, it is a job. It's just like being a doctor. You go to your, you know, your office, you do your work and then you come home. But to keep it fresh every night, you have to remember that the audience, for the audience, even though you've done it a hundred times, the audience is seeing it for the first time. So you have to make it fresh and new and exciting and that's what gets me invigorated every time I hear them laugh or scream or jump or jump up out of their seats and it's their first time some some people it may be their first time ever seeing a Broadway show so that changes the monotony for me the audience is always different so the show is always different next question so this is from Jamie Sharp 
what are your best tips for vocal health okay so my voice is like my gold okay this is my instrument this is just if I had I don't know clarinet no bow piano or whatever you know how people are very protective over their instruments they put them in a case they wrap them up they clean them your voice is the same thing it's your instrument you have to make sure that you take care of it you only get one voice and the voice is muscle so just like any other muscle in your body it gets fatigued and it also needs to be stretched it also needs to be watered it has to be fed like there's so many uh, variables to keep your instrument strong and healthy so things that I do to keep my instrument healthy is to sleep okay so I sleep a lot and I wake up late which you know I don't have a kid right now so I have the pleasure of waking up late if I want to um, but I do have to get a lot of sleep I know that my voice is gonna go out if I haven't had enough sleep if I um, am not well rested my voice goes that's the first thing to take me out of here is not having enough sleep also hydration this is winter time we are in the worst part of the season where it's dry and cold and dusty and terrible so I have to make sure to keep a water bottle next to me at all times especially in the winter time because I forget I, I forget don't we forget we forget so I forget to drink water so I have to keep the water next to me to remind me oh you need to drink that I'll also find a teacher to get you some technique I cannot stress this enough. I'm a gospel singer. I sang gospel my whole life. Um, so I did a lot of hard singing growing up. So much to the fact that I had to get vocal surgery when I was 18 years old. 18. It was one of the toughest things I've ever gone through. I had a cyst on my vocal cord. Uh, and I went through a lot trying to, you know, get my voice back together. So I just urge you to um, get some technique from a teacher. I had an amazing teacher, Karen Hall. She saved me, like she taught me to sing. She taught me to speak again, healthfully. Um, it, was, it was just an amazing experience. It changed my life. Uh, now I can sing, I can belt, I can mix. I learned how to mix, which was number one important. I learned how to mix. Because now in musical theater, we have to belt and sing a lot of high notes. Um, and they want them to be loud. <laughs> Let's face it. Um, I call it American Idol Syndrome. But they want the notes to be high and they want them to be loud. And that's what I can do and that's what they get. I get paid to do. But I had to learn how to do that healthfully in a way that doesn't hurt my voice because I have to sing it eight times a week. So I learned how to mix. It's a whole technique of you know how to do it so go to a teacher teach you learn how to mix belt it's it changed my life um, do that that will help you because anybody can book the job but keeping the job is the most important thing all right let's go on to the next question this is question from Olivia Barrow how do you keep yourself healthy and prepared for your demanding job how do I keep myself prepared and healthy? Uh, I'm in a very, very physical show. I have to do a lot of tap numbers, a lot of costume changes, and I am not a dancer by training. I learn on the streets, okay? <laughs> I learned how to dance because I was a cheerleader, and then I took what I learned from cheerleading and then I ran with it. So I started doing shows and then I've learned from just doing shows, basically. I learned to tap for Aladdin. I didn't go to class. I just um, learned in the room, Ooh, which was crazy. Um, and then Casey was like, oh, I'm doing this other show, something wrong. Don't, it only has a few, like, there's like two, two tap numbers in there. It was a lot of tap and I think I wanted to quit many times because I was like this isn't my ministry I don't, I don't know what I'm doing what am I doing here everybody knows what a flat ball change is I have no idea what a flat ball change is so it was a lot I mean I was very <laughs> it was very dramatic but I made it through but since I do have such a physical job I have to work out I know I've been working out this week because I've been so busy but I do like to go to spin class to keep my breast support up to keep my energy up you know it 
it just it makes you feel better. I'm with Class Pass, which I love. Thank you, Class Pass. Um, where you can take boutique classes for one set price. Um, but I'll put the link to Class Pass in the description box. Next question. Next question. My next question is from Lily Bucko. What are your best audition tips? Um, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. <laughs> On me auditioning, we have a, like a love-hate relationship. Sometimes I love it, sometimes I hate it. A lot of times I hate it. <laughs> but I, I, cause when I get to just go sing and just be fierce and it's something I know and I know this role is for me, I love it, it's great. But when it's something that I don't quite know it and I don't quite understand why it was called then, it's always a trick bag. It's always a trick bag. You're just, okay, I always put it like this. You're a small puzzle piece in this very large puzzle of a show. There's producers that have to like you. The director has people that he already is, you know, thinking about that he wants for the project. Um, the casting director, maybe he knows somebody that's right for the project. The fact that you even make it into the room is like a blessing. And then the fact that you book the show is quite honestly a miracle. Um, so I have to like remember that I'm just a small puzzle piece and my puzzle piece is shaped this way. And if it doesn't fit into that puzzle, then it wasn't right for me. So my tip is to just be yourself. I know everyone says that, be yourself. But seriously, just go do what you do. Um, know your material. Try to be off book as much as possible. My film teacher always tells me, be memorized for film. And I'm always like, oh, I don't wanna memorize. I have so much to do. Make sure your book is in order. Always have extra headshots, extra resumes, extra music, extra songs, because they will throw a curveball at you. They'll literally make you do a whole concert in the room and you're like, are you kidding me? You want me to sing five songs? Yes, they want you to sing five songs. So be super prepared. Another tip is to choose a song that you can sing if you're sick, if you're tired, if you're broke, if you went out all night. It has to be a song that shows everything that you can do, but you can sing it in any kind of environment because you never know what curveballs are gonna get thrown your way. You don't wanna be singing that high and you can't hit that every day you only can hit that sometimes so don't do that to yourself stay tuned for part two of the broadway beat q a coming up next